What's up guys, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. If you happen to see my last video, I talked about the top five corals that are the worst for me to photograph. Now that doesn't mean my views towards corals are completely negative. There's actually a bunch of corals that I really love. I wouldn't be working here if there wasn't. Now, how this list is broken down is based on categories. These categories include SPS, LPS, mushrooms, anemones, and soft corals. I had to do this because if I were to give you my favorite corals in general, the whole list would be different kinds of euphilia and anemones, hands down. So this organizational method allows me to dip into other types of coral and coral-like creatures to give a well-rounded view of what I actually like. So without further ado, let's just dive into it. <laughs> All right, so my first category is SPS and my favorite SPS coral is Acropora. Montipora came in at a close second, but I absolutely love the different color varieties of Acropora, as well as the shapes that they create as the colonies get larger. I don't know why, but whenever I look at really large colonies of Acropora, they just always remind me of bonsai trees, you know the ones, just by the way that they're shaped, and I always thought that that was super cool. Since this type of coral comes in the most color varieties of any other coral type, I've decided to give y'all my top three Acropora types. It's like a list within a list, I guess you could say. So the first one that I like quite a bit is what we like to call the Ultra Shortcake Acropora. I am definitely a fan of Acropora that have multiple colors happening all at once, but the reason that I enjoy this coral specifically and not something like a Homewrecker or a Walt Disney that also have multiple colors is because you don't need really intense blue light to see their beautiful color combinations. The next acro on my list is actually of the Millipora variety. My favorite Milla is the Purple Acropora Millipora, mainly because when it's frag size, it doesn't look that special. It looks pretty plain, to be honest. But once it grows into a larger colony, it's just a big purple explosion, and it looks absolutely stunning. The third acro in my top three list of Acropora is the Mythos variety. This coral's light blue coloration gives it an eerie ghostly vibe, in my opinion, and that's why I like it so much. This variety is also on the hardier side of the Acropora spectrum, making the care a little bit easier than other varieties of Acropora. Now, just because I'm listing off my favorite corals, it doesn't mean I can't see their downsides. Despite how much I enjoy looking at those clusters of fuzzy sticks, I don't think I would ever be able to care for them myself without a bit of help first starting out. Acropora are pretty sensitive to most tank conditions, so it takes a more advanced, experienced hand to care for them. These corals demand a lot of light and a lot of flow to remain healthy, and if you can't provide that, they'll either change colors to something really unappealing or just die right before your eyes. You know, a bit dramatic, don't you think? However, you can turn this constant need for attention into a good thing if you're an aquarist looking to get more serious about this hobby. The goal of keeping Acropora alive is enough motivation to get almost any aquarist to refine their skills and amp up their attention to detail. So that's my favorite type of SPS coral, Acropora. Next on my list is my favorite LPS coral, and Frog Spawn takes the prize for that. I'd have to say that it's my favorite coral, period. This is the only coral that I have seen so far where the name accurately matches up with how the coral looks. Like, yeah, those, those definitely look like frog eggs, 100%. <laughs> Besides the extremely accurate name, the reason I like these little guys is just the way that they move. And I bet a lot of other hobbyists can confirm this. The way that they sway in the flow is always just so intriguing to me and so much different than any other coral that I've seen here. This coral comes in a couple different color varieties, green and orange. Green is my favorite personally, just because it's the same color you would associate with a frog, so I find it fits the name a bit better, but that doesn't mean I'm going to hate on the orange variety. These alien looking guys also have a few downsides that come along with how cool they are. For starters, like most euphilia, frog spawn come equipped with sweeper tentacles that are used to sting surrounding corals that get too close to this coral's personal space bubble. And believe me, they can get pretty aggressive about it. So if you're looking to have this coral in close proximity to other corals, <laughs> you can forget it. 
Another thing that you need to watch out for is how your skin reacts to this coral. Most of the time, you can't really feel a coral sting because it never penetrates your skin. Occasionally though, you can feel it when it happens to be where the skin is particularly sensitive, like on the back of your hand or on your forearm. Some people's skin will actually have a bad allergic reaction after handling this coral, and extreme cases can even put someone in the hospital. It sounds bad, but I actually find this bit of information kind of amusing, mainly because it reminds me of the poison dart frog and how that frog has toxins in it that makes the skin break out as well. I'm aware that I'm using lots of frog references, but come on, it's literally called a frog spawn. How could I not do that? Allergic reactions are rare, but they do happen, so if you are worried about frog spawn stings, I would suggest wearing gloves. All right, so on to number three of my list of favorite corals. This section of corals aren't corals at all. They're actually known as corallomorphs. You may know these corallomorphs as mushrooms. My favorite mushroom probably has to be the Ricordia mushroom. This type of mushroom comes in two varieties from two different locations. The Florida variety comes from the Caribbean and the Yuma variety from Indonesia. My favorite is the latter. Despite their similarities, the Yuma's colors are so much more vibrant than the Florida's and the layout of their tentacles is a lot more interesting to me than the tentacles of the Ricordia Florida. Sorry to all you Ricordia Florida stands out there, but don't take it personally. Florida's are cool, but they aren't as eye-catching as the Yuma. Speaking of colors, the Yuma comes in a bunch of different color varieties, including red, neon green, blue, and purple. However, my favorite remains to be the neon orange variety. But of course, the one that I pick out to be my favorite is the only mushroom that isn't easy to care for. <laughs> Lucky me. The Ricordia Yuma is a lot more sensitive to chemical imbalances in the water than its cousin, the Ricordia Florida, making this a coral for more advanced reef hobbyists. You win this time, Ricordia Florida stands. Mushrooms are normally known for being good for beginners due to their hardiness, but not this little guy. He lives to be difficult. But hey, <laughs> those colors though. So the next category on my list of favorite corals aren't actually corals either. Maybe I should consider renaming this list. Two thirds of these aren't actually corals. This category is for anemones, and my favorite one is definitely the bubble tip anemone. And no, this isn't just because I have a hard time photographing flower anemones. However, that might play a small role in my decision making. Nevertheless, bubble tips are one of my favorite reef inhabitants in general. They make great homes for clownfish and grow to be pretty massive. These anemones have lots of different color morphs as well that are changing all the time due to splitting. But my favorite color morph has to be the Colorado sunburst variety. This color morph includes a green base with ultra vibrant orange tentacles. At Tidal Gardens, we actually have one that just refuses to split that's gotten to be around the size of a dinner plate. And ever since we got it, I just thought it was the coolest thing. Even now, whenever I'm in the greenhouse doing photography stuff, I always walk over and have a peek at it just to see how it's doing. It's funny because the guys are begging this thing to split every day and it just doesn't. It just keeps growing bigger and bigger out of spite and I love it so much. <laughs> if you want one of these anemones for your tank, there is one thing to worry about. It is the fact that they tend to travel around the tank on their own. This then leads to issues with possibly getting stuck in uh, pumps or overflows and getting damaged or killed. However, this can be prevented by adding filter sponges. This solution does require more diligent cleaning to keep the bacteria from building up in the sponges, but it's worth it if it means your anemone isn't going to get sucked into a sump. So this next and last category of corals is soft corals, but I use that term very loosely because I'm lumping zoanthids into that mix, which is my favorite of this group, zoanthids. I realized that in my last video, <laughs> I put zoas on my list of worst corals to try and shoot, but despite them being annoying sometimes, they are still one of my favorite corals when they actually do cooperate. The thing that I like the most about zoanthids is the fact that they come in so many different color combinations, it's insane. Zoanthids are also known to have some pretty wacky names associated with each of their color morphs, such as goblin's fire, jungle juice, and even radioactive dragon eyes. <laughs> and that just makes them so much more likable to me. 
Since they do come in so many different varieties, it's hard to narrow down my selection to just one. And I didn't just want to settle for three like I did with the Acropora. I was determined to find my favorite. So after much thought, tear brackets, coffee breaks, and cycling through every photo I've ever shot, I finally did it. My favorite zoanthids are definitely the magician zoanthids. I love their sparkly center contrasted with their stripy skirt, and they actually photograph really well, so that's also a plus. Even though zoanthids are usually good for beginner hobbyists, there is one setback to having zoanthids, though. This is the fact that some kinds of zoas contain a powerful neurotoxin called palytoxin. It's okay to handle them, but if you have any open cuts on your hands, that toxin is able to get into your bloodstream and it can be incredibly deadly. So, word to the wise, just wear gloves when handling these guys. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for my video on favorite corals. I do have one question for you guys before I go though, and that is, would you like to see me start my own tank here? Here at Tidal Gardens, I have all the corals and materials I could ever need and more for starting my own tank. It's just a matter of if y'all want to watch it all come together. So leave your responses in the comments below on what you think of the idea. Also, don't forget that we do still have merch available on our Teespring store with something for everyone, so don't forget to check that out. And until next time, happy reefing! Worth it if it means your anemone won't get stuck to, stuck to, Yes. <laughs> stuck into a sump. <laughs> the qu <laughs> Okay. I just swallowed the word coral. <laughs> <laughs> However, my Acropora. One. Scroll. Jesus. What? I can't read. <laughs> My brain's just assuming words, and those words are not correct. These ca- All right, so on to number three. You're kidding me. Three. Three. Yes, correct. 